Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here. Welcome to the Retro Future. Today, we're taking a look at fake Game Boys from China. This one is 12 pounds, this one is 50 pounds, and this one is over 100 Great British pounds. We're gonna look at the three different levels and what you can get. I can't believe China are still making these fake Game Boys. Let's take a look and see if they're any good. Starting off with the cheapest then, this is the new GB Game Boy Station Lite. 500 in one real games, as opposed to those fake games that almost certainly exist on this device. Super classic games, lots of games. Uh, yeah, I think this thing has something to do with games. All in all, you can't really complain. It's quite a nice presentation little box for a gift or something. You've got some screenshots of some games here. Play all the GB Station Lite Color and GB Station Lite games you already own. Wait a minute, so this plays actual cartridges. That is gonna be interesting. This one is the red one, really excited. Before we take a look at it, let's have a look what it says on AliExpress. Retro portable mini handheld video game console 3.0 inch color LCD kids color game player built in 500 games children's gift. It's got 4.4 stars and nearly 400 of them have sold. That is not bad going. It was apparently 20 pounds and it's now reduced to 11.28. 3.0 inch eye moistening color screen. Play more happily. Hell yeah, I love that eye moistening screen. That is my favorite kind of screen. Okay, so let's see, we've got an empty bag. That's one of my favorite accessories. You can do things with it like pop it on your finger. We have a USB charging cable sporting that mini USB. It's good to see that someone's still using that incredibly outdated port. So let's have a look then at the actual unit itself. So it comes in this lovely bag and the first impressions are it's kind of got that you know, that McDonald's toy sort of feeling to it. Uh, it's... So it has actually got a cartridge slot here. Let's take Arthur and the Mini Moys and see if we can plug that in there. And no, it's not gonna fit. This one is too small. It didn't come with any games and I don't have any games that can plug it into there. It's pretty much gonna be exactly the same as what is loaded onto here, just a different selection. It's not gonna be anything special. So let's go ahead and chuck the battery inside of it. Uh, there we go, and we can put that back on. And let's take a look around the device. So we've got the mini USB port there. We've got what looks to be a headphone jack port, but it's not. That's where your AV is gonna plug in, so you can plug this into your TV if you wish. Uh, there isn't actually a headphone jack on here. There's a volume wheel on this side and a power switch on this side. We've got two shoulder buttons. Very, very clicky. It says GB station there, which is quite nice. Digital pocket system. And yeah, it's exactly what you'd expect. It looks like a Game Boy Advance SP, except just something is not quite right. The speaker is just in a completely random location. On the original one, it's in the middle. We've got a reset button up here, our D-pad, everything feels really, really spongy. And actually the D-pad recesses below the sort of opening for it. So it actually ends up meaning you're just digging your finger on these four corners. But let's go ahead and turn it on. Oh right into it. Super Bear Bros 3. And here we go, we're off. Uh, yeah, so that D-pad, oh mother. Can you see that when you press the D-pad, it actually like recesses so far? And that's how much you have to press it in order to register the button press. So that is truly awful. Uh, the L and R buttons seem to just be turbo. I mean, this is an NES game, it's not even a Game Boy game, so uh, so yeah, th there's no need for an, a shoulder button right now. There's a lot of uh, graphical sort of glitches going on on the screen as well, which don't look too good. Um, I would say, although this works, it's not great. It's it's probably a, a nice thing to give to a to give to a kid to, so that they can say that they have a retro console and be cool and trendy at school or however you get friends. I don't know. I didn't have any. In terms of an actual like enthusiast. This is pretty naff. The, the distance that this thing goes down is not okay. So that is gonna conclude the first one. Let's take a look at the next one and hope that it is something a bit better. And we're not off to a good start considering it arrived in this packaging. This is how it arrived in a jiffy bag. So I'm expecting to see some scratches. Nice, a nice scratch there on the top of my brand new 50 pound console. And you know, it is depressing to think that 50, 50 pounds is a lot of money. And the fact that it's arriving with a bunch of scratches, you would be disappointed. Presumably that's come from, yeah, in fact, look at this. You can actually see some blue 
on this plastic bag where this corner here, which is also damaged, has spent the entire time in transit from China rubbing on that. So that's really nice. Uh, so we've got a charging brick here, it's USB, and then we have, what is it? Oh, that is surprising. This is an actual Game Boy Advance SP charging cable, except it's USB on the end of it, which is really nice. So that is actually very surprising and very useful. And in fact, this feels good. You can, you can immediately tell that this looks the part. This looks fully like a one-for-one -one clone of a Game Boy Advance SP. The only difference is it says Game Box here. If you flip it over onto the back, it is uh, saying Game Box here. It doesn't say Nintendo anywhere. So they're not trying to pass this off as a Game Boy. Obviously, it's modeled completely off of one. Slightly nicer hinge. Relievingly, the buttons feel much better. Wow, I, I have a lot of hope for this thing. The one thing I will say is that the aspect ratio of the screen is ever so slightly off. It's a bit too rectangular. There is a screen protector on here. Let's go ahead and remove that. Nice. Okay, so this one actually looks as well like it's going to play Game Boy Advance cartridges, which is really damn cool. But let's see what happens when we turn it on and there's nothing in it. I hate that. I hate everything about that. It looks like it's broken, and then suddenly it loads up. EXEQ Game Box. EXEQ Game Box. Uh, so yeah, there's no inbuilt games, which is actually kind of surprising. I totally would have thought there would have been. Uh, let's plug in Arthur and the Minimoys then, and let's see if we just go straight into the gameplay. Don't really know what to expect from this. Holy! Look at that! Straight into the gameplay, licensed by Nintendo, that's funny. I have to say, I'm actually quite surprised. This is just a Game Boy clone. It's playing Game Boy games, but we're gonna have to get a better Game Boy game. Sorry, Arthur and the Mini Boys. One thing I have to do is try an original Game Boy game on here. This one is actually for the Game Boy Color, but let's see, does it also have backwards compatibility? That would be really cool. I don't know if you can see there as well, but there's a very yellow hue to the screen. It does not look like it plays original Game Boy games on here, which is fine. It's kind of expected, to be honest with you. Here we go, let's play Driver 2. Basically GTA for the Game Boy. Let's get in this car. How do we do that? Oh, it's the R button. So the speaker's really nice and loud. This works very well. This game is really graphically intensive and there's no graphical issues whatsoever. The sound seems to be perfect to me. I'm very surprised. I mean, 50 pounds would actually get you an authentic, genuine Game Boy, but it wouldn't have a backlit screen. And this one does have a backlit screen. And there's a huge difference between that and a frontlit one. So this, I have to say, is quite impressive. The one downside is that the aspect ratio is completely off. Uh, this is not how it's supposed to be, but it's not far off. 50 pounds, backlit screen, plays Game Boy games, no backwards compatibility, looks pretty accurate, does come with scratches, don't think it's worth buying. And just for some reference, this is an AGS 101 backlit Game Boy, this is an AGS 001 frontlit Game Boy, and this is the aftermarket one. You can be the judge. I still think I prefer this over this. Obviously this one's much better, but this comes in at over a hundred pounds. This one's probably about the same price as this. So let me know what you think. So that leaves us with the a hundred pound fake Game Boy from China. What makes this so expensive? Well, according to AliExpress, this is the anime version original backlit for GBA SP game refurbished console with box fit Game Boy Advance SP game handheld system kids gift. <sighs> And there was loads of different colors to choose from. I went for a green Pokemon Rayquaza edition shell. So the box looks pretty convincing. It actually says Nintendo on it and everything like that. The thing that's gonna be interesting about this, this comes in at pretty much the same price as either refurbishing and modding one yourself or buying a slightly beat up backlit one off of eBay. So I don't know, this one actually could be something decent. So first impressions, it looks quite nice. It's in good condition. It hasn't arrived with any scratches on it. The printing on it is, it is, is, is pretty naff, but I don't have a real one to show it next to. I mean, you can see the printing difference between this one, which is an original one, but I'm not sure what, what you guys think of this. I don't know if it looks too great to me. Uh, it has got all of the Nintendo 
printing on this sticker on the back here. There's a little quality control sticker there and stuff. It doesn't feel too bad from the outside. Everything feels pretty good. As I said as well, you know, this aftermarket shell is what you'd probably be buying to mod your Game Boy anyway. So this is pretty much what it would look like. Let's take this screen protector off. So I think, you know what? That is an IPS display. That is an IPS display. That is actually a better screen than what is in this Game Boy Advance here from Nintendo. So that is quite good. This is an IPS Game Boy Advance SP. It's gonna be using a slightly less desirable motherboard. This will be using the front lit motherboard version, but that doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, this has a backlit screen and it looks pretty damn impressive. Obviously, this means it's gonna have full backwards compatibility because it is actually a Game Boy. You can see there, modding a Game Boy yourself is not for everybody. To have one that's modded for you for pretty much what I would expect, the same price as buying all the stuff yourself, that's not a bad deal. I don't think that's a bad deal at all. The screen quality on this is just fantastic. I mean, there is no denying this is a much better device than that Game Box and certainly much better than the GB Station. Will the police car leave me alone, please? Yeah, I, I am very impressed with this. A hundred pounds, really not that bad at all. Please let me know in the comment section what you think of this because I actually reckon this is worth buying. If you are in the market for a modded Game Boy and you have a hundred pounds to spend, this one is decent. I would avoid these two, to be honest with you. Buy yourself a sandwich, save up double the money of this and get your hands on one of these. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you're new, leave a like, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.